right, so since they gave me a mic, I'll do my best to just try and talk to you and have a conversation. All right. So last week we were together and we had a, a, a great discussion and it was a teaching entitled A Bunch of Stuff You Probably Don't Want to Hear. How many were here to be blessed by that, that last week? Amen. A bunch of stuff you probably didn't want to hear. And it was kind of just a bunch of Holy Ghost rambling from one thing to the next, as if to suggest that the Holy Ghost rambles. But I was sharing my heart, and I want to kind of continue in that vein of just discussion. Okay? Now, we, we do get a lot of preaching. Amen. To all of our first-time guests, we do get some preaching here at Trinity Harvest. We do. But, but sometimes we need to stop slow down, and just talk about some things. In fact, over in Luke chapter 24, when Jesus, after his resurrection, he came onto the road of, uh, to uh, Emmaus with Cleophas and the other disciple, and after he had revealed him to him, them to himself, he began to, as the Bible say, expound on all scriptures, beginning with Moses and the prophets, and expound on all things concerning himself. And after this, this, this conversation or this exchange, the disciples, they said, did not our hearts burn while he spoke to us by the wayside? So, so in that particular conversation, I don't think Jesus was, hey, oh God. I think he was just having a conversation. <laughs> so I'm saying sometimes, sometimes salvation comes just simply through conversation. Some, sometimes breakthrough and healing comes through conversation. So let's just have a conversation. And for the next few weeks, take if you go back over there, for the next few weeks, I want to talk to you from a, a series of teaching. Tech, if you go back over there for me, there you go. Wisdom and instruction. Did y'all lose my deal or something? Okay, amen. Praise the Lord. They got me confused. Praise the Lord. Wisdom IQ. That's what I want to talk about. Wisdom IQ. Okay. Praise God. Go, go with me to Ephesians chapter 5. Paul has something to say here in Ephesians chapter 5. Chapter 5, verse 15 through 17. Watch what Paul says. He says, see then that you walk circumspectly. Not how? Not as fools. Unfortunately, you don't have to look very far. Nor do you have to look very long to encounter some foolishness. Y'all talk back to me and we'll get out of here pretty quickly. So Paul says, he says, look, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but how? As wise. Verse 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Verse 17, wherefore be ye not unwise, but doing what? Understanding what the will of the Lord is. Let's back that up and rewind that again. He says, see then that you walk circumspectly. I love this word circumspectly because it has the idea of both diligence and accuracy. All right? In other words, Paul is saying you need to focus and make sure that you're di diligently accurate when it comes to living out the will of God, living out the word of God. Oh, my goodness. And then he says redeeming the time because the days are evil. What Paul is literally saying is, the more you walk in wisdom, the more you buy back time. God Almighty. Walking in wisdom buys up every opportunity that the Lord has set before us. Walking in foolishness causes us to miss and even sometimes abort divine opportunity. Your life, oh God, y'all gonna make me teach in here could be so much better if you walked in wisdom. You, you would have taken advantage of so many. Listen, it is amazing how some people have, have been born out of the same womb, raised in the same household, given all of the same instructions, given all of the same guidance, but one turns out to be a doggone fool. And you look at their lives, you be like, y'all cannot be brothers. Cannot be sisters because how did she make it and how did you miss it? And that's because we're not maximizing every opportunity. We're not maximizing every moment by walking in wisdom. 
You remember I said this to you before, you got to be careful because if you miss a moment, you most likely will miss an opportunity. And if you miss an opportunity, you'll miss an entire season. You could be in a totally different season in your life had you walked in wisdom. Redeeming the time because sufficient is the evil days. There is so much evil opportunity. There is, there is the, the mass presence of evil and nonsense. So again, you don't even have to go looking for foolishness. You don't have to go looking for trouble. Trouble and foolishness will find you. But if you're clothed in wisdom, then trouble and foolishness has no place in your life. Is this making any sense? He says this, verse 17, wherefore, be not unwise. Don't be stupid. There's a difference between being stupid and being dumb. Dumb is just simply ignorance, meaning I wasn't aware. I didn't know any better. But stupidity is knowing what's right. Well, this must be already tough. And still doing the wrong thing. He says, he says, wherefore, don't be stupid. But understand what the will of the Lord is for your life. So wisdom is important for us. It is important for us to get it. It is important for us to have it. It is important for us to understand it. Watch this. So when we talk about wisdom, we got to talk about the nature of wisdom. Are y'all still following me? The nature of wisdom. Watch, what, watch, what, watch this here. Wisdom, what it's not, it is not IQ. I, I, need, I need to talk about that because everybody representing such and such state university and Amen. All of us got our college t-shirts on and all that kind of good stuff. And some of us, as the old preacher would say, have more degrees than a thermometer. Some of us are doctor so-and-so. And, and amen. In here, it got all of the different letters of the alphabet behind our, our handle. And, and, and still, you got to understand, wisdom is not IQ. In fact, IQ stands for intelligence quotient. It is a form of measuring a person's capacity for intelligence. So then wisdom is not even intelligence. What is intelligence? Intelligence is the ability to learn or acquire knowledge and skill. But that's still not wisdom. Right? Wisdom is not intelligence because you can learn how to do a thing or you can get information. All you got to do is put the, the little box in your hand, the little smartphone in your hand, go to Google and type in anything and you can get the information. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? In fact, to be honest with you, the majority of us in here who have all of these degrees and we're still in student you know, debt and all that kind of good stuff, there is no information in your program that was not already available to you. Did nobody want to say amen? The only benefit of your program is they, they catalog and categorize and strategically put that information together to make it easier for you to learn and to master it. And then they give you this whole network to make you seem smart so you can put papers on your wall. And you can say, I have intelligence. Don't necessarily have wisdom. But I have intelligence. So then if intelligence is just the ability to learn and, and to acquire knowledge and skill, what is wisdom? Wisdom then is the ability to discern inequalities and relationships. Wisdom allows you to see beneath the surface. Wisdom exposes those latent elements of the situation and circumstances. What I mean when I say latent, I'm saying just under the surface. Things that are just out of view and just out of common understanding and just out of common knowledge. Wisdom exposes all of those things. Wisdom will help you to see the enemy's fingerprints. This is some Holy Ghost stuff. It wasn't in the lesson right here. When, when, when we say latent, it helps you to see the latent elements that is under the surface. You know how y'all watch some of them CSI shows where whenever there was a crime committed and the, the, the culprit or the perpetrator, the suspect has gotten away, the first thing they come in there with is the fingerprint dust. God Almighty. And then they begin to brush the surfaces to see who's been handling this situation. Who's got their hands on it? I'm talking better than you saying amen. See, God's word is like your fingerprint dust. Yeah. It, it, it allows you to see beneath the surface the things that are just hidden beyond the naked eye. It, the word of God will brush your life. And, and it'll show you when the enemy's hands is on. Y'all missing what I'm saying. And then watch this. The word will also brush your life and you can see the divine thumbprint of the Lord on your life. Some of y'all need to just brush your life with the word. Some of y'all need the word dust on your life. 
So that way when you look in the mirror, you're not confused about who you are. You're not confused about who you are. You're not confused about what you've been called to do. The devil is a lie. I wish I had somebody. We, we need to have a dusting party in here. When we, when we get to the altar, we're going to bring the oil out and have a dusting party so we can see who's at work. We can see who's handling it. And if the Lord is on your life, you are standing and walking in victory. You are standing and walking in power. And for those who got the hand of Satan on your life, I decree and I declare, I speak it in the name of Jesus. Satan, take your hands off of the people of God. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Woo! All right, I'm supposed to be teaching. But look at your knees and, and say, wisdom will help me see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wisdom don't just help me to see that you don't like me. <laughs> wisdom helps me to see why you don't like me. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? And, and here's the bad part about it. It's the part I have to pray about because when I see why you don't like me, I start doing more of it. Y'all missing what I'm saying here. Watch, watch this. Wisdom helps you to understand why the enemy doesn't like you. The enemy doesn't like you because there is no redemption for falling angels, but there is redemption for falling man. The blood was not meant for the angels. The blood was meant for, I wish I had somebody in here. And so every time the enemy saw demonstrating how much he don't like me, I give him more reason not to like me because I lift up my hands in worship. I give him more reason not to like me. I lift up my hands and pray, devil, I know you don't like me and I'm going to do more of it. I'm praying so you you don't like me. I'm fasting so you don't like me. I'm believing so you don't like me. All right, that wasn't part of the lesson, but y'all take that one for free. So wisdom, wisdom is the ability to discern inequalities and relationships to see how things work together, how they come together. Is this making sense? But wisdom is still yet not biblical wisdom because biblical wisdom is spiritual discernment. Really what I've been talking about is spiritual discernment and above all, the reverence and knowledge of God. See, you can have intelligence and then you can have wisdom, uh, the form of earthly human wisdom, but it's still not the same as biblical wisdom because biblical wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord. Watch what Solomon says over in Proverbs 9 and 10. He says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of his holy understanding. This whole thing has to start with both knowing and reverencing who God is. God Almighty. Most of us want all of the blessings and the promises that God brings without the God that brings them. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? Some of us have been in those kind of relationships where people were connected us to us because of what we have and what we can do for them. And that was some of the most terrible, most, most I mean, miserable connections that we had is when people were only taking advantage of us. Come on, somebody. Never demonstrated any love or affection towards us except for when they wanted something. Oh, you hear me? And so this is how we are with God. We want all of God's stuff. We want his knowledge. We want his understanding. We want his breakthroughs. We want his miracles, but we just don't want him. The reason why we don't want him is because with him comes his instruction. With him comes his commandments. With him comes his requirements of righteousness. And all we want is the stuff to make us feel good. To make us look good. But when will we start wanting him to make him look good? To make him feel good? Y'all not talking to me. That, Yeah, yeah. We need to get to the point where we're more concerned about what God thinks of us and his opinions of us versus what other people thinks of us and what other people's opinion of us are. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because watch this. When you get to a place where God is more important to you than people, and what people think, excuse me, what God thinks is more important to you, what people think, when God sees that on your life, then what God will do is what he did for Joshua and Jesus. See, when Joshua was transitioning uh, from being Moses' servant, Moses' follower, 
Moses' apprentice into a place of leadership. The Bible says after God had this conversation with him, telling him to be of good courage and to, to focus and meditate on his word day and night and don't let it proceed out of your mouth. After he said that, he says, look, then I will make your way prosper. And then the scripture says, and God began to advance and raise Joshua in the eyes of the people. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Same thing with Jesus when he was 12 years old. The Bible said at that point he began to grow in stature and he began to grow his reputation, his image in the eyes of the people. You will never achieve the heights of how people will respect you until you achieve the heights of how you respect God. Yeah. I said that I said that kind of backwards. What I'm saying is your level of respect by people is predicated on your level of respect for God. Are oh, you hearing me? Watch me. He says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of his uh, holy understanding. Watch this. So now we're still talking about the nature of the Bible. We're talking about uh, of wisdom, the biblical wisdom, the proper application. So wisdom is not just simply getting the information. It is not just simply developing the skill. It is the proper application of what is discerned, what is known. What is experience and what is understood? I've taught you this before. Both wisdom and foolishness are supplemented by knowledge. You have to know something to both be a fool and a wise man. But the difference between foolishness and wisdom, wisdom is properly applying that which I know, that which I understand. Somebody say amen to me. We got some of the most intelligent men and women. I'm talking about have high levels of IQ, but they're functioning and living their lives in the street. I'm talking about well-versed in the legal system, well-versed in pharmaceuticals. Ain't nobody going to say amen. They know how to mix it, balance it, cut it. They got good supply chain management. They know how to distribute it. Listen, the game don't produce no fool. Oh, excuse me, the game don't produce dumb people. It produces fools. Because the game is the improper application of that which I've learned. That that I now know, that that I have experienced, that that I understand. But wisdom is the proper application of those things. Is this helping anybody? Biblical wisdom is still yet. Biblical wisdom produces, God Almighty, that which is ethical, moral, and righteous. It leads to humility, respect, and service towards God and others. These are some strong definitions right here. Make you think about your life. You felt like you was the wisest one on your block, the wisest one in your family. But have your wisdom been producing ethics, morality, righteousness? Now, some of our wisdom has been producing judgment, condemnation, jealousy, envy. But, but biblical wisdom produces ethical, moral, morality, and righteousness. Watch this. And it is humble. Some of y'all can be a witness to this. You try both of God's plan. It's plan A and it's plan B. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. You missed this plan A and you tried this plan B. God's plan A is humility. His plan B is humiliation. I didn't, boy, I should have had more witnesses than that. Because most of us have taken the B path. I know I have. God's plan B is humiliation. In other words, if you don't willfully become hum, uh, hum, excuse me, humble, then God will humble you. This same writer says pride comes just before the fall. 
just before the destruction. And you can tell when the cars are about to fall. The whole house of cars is about to come apart when you see somebody all puffed up in their pride, thinking that they're better than somebody else. Looking at somebody else's error, somebody else's mistake, somebody else's bad decision and saying, look, that ain't me. I, I ain't about that. But soon and very soon, if you don't get up like Big Mama say, off your high horse and get down on your low knees and humble yourself before God, you'll find yourself falling as well. God Almighty. The church should be the last place that we tripping over people falling. Right? One of the most popular and chief verses that we teach in the church is Romans 3 and 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Some of us have rewritten that, McGrone. We, 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 we read it like this. For all y'all have sin. We try to exempt ourselves from the truth of the word, but all of us have made mistakes and made errors. And, and here's the thing. God doesn't want us to stay in those places of destruction, in those places of demoralization. What he wants those things to do is to become a reminder or a guiding post. Don't go that way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All right. So wisdom then produces the, that which is ethical, moral, and righteous. It leads to humility, respect, and service toward God and others. A wise man, a wise woman's life is mar marked by service. Are you hearing me? When you say that I'm a believer, I'm a disciple of Christ, the first thing I should ask you is who are you serving? And it's cool for you to say, well, I'm serving God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's one. But along with God, who are you serving? Where are you serving? Most of the time when I'm talking to people about their church, I don't ask you what church do you go to. I usually ask, hey, where do you worship? That's first. Or I ask you, where do you serve? Right? We have too many people who are seeking to be served. rather than setting themselves and making themselves available to serve. Can I, can I talk to you real quick? Trinity Harvest Church is not Texas Roadhouse. Papa Do's, Bob's, whatever your favorite restaurant is, this is not that. Boy, it just got real quiet now. No, 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 because when you go to Texas Roadhouse, you expect for them to, uh, you know, when they walk through the door, they greet you, and they go and find you a seat in the place. They bring you that nice bread and cinnamon butter. But somebody got the Holy Ghost right there when I talked about the cinnamon butter. We're going to start calling the anointing oil cinnamon butter. Just, if, if that's what it's going to do to your life, amen. But you go in, and they, they take you to your seat, and then they come and ask you, what do you want? What would you like to have? And they're, they're constantly coming to your table, waiting on you to make sure you have everything that your heart desires. They're coming to serve. Listen, this is not that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And, and we come into the house of the Lord. We come into the things of God looking to be served. But Jesus said, no servant is greater than his master. And if you are a servant of Christ, a disciple of Christ, then your heart is set to serve others. I go on. So biblical wisdom produces that which is ethical, moral, and righteous. It leads to humility, respect, and service towards God and people. So then we have to talk about the importance of wisdom. Now that we understand the nature of wisdom, you've got to understand something. Wisdom is very, very important. Solomon says it like this. He says, how much better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather than chosen silver? Some of us are trying to get stuff rather than the wisdom, number one, to understand the value of stuff and how to get it. Wisdom is better than all of your stuff. I'm going to say it to this group over here because I ain't hear nothing over here. Wisdom is better than your stuff. Amen. And, and, and all your hearts is going, but I like, 
I like them wheels on my car. Yeah, but wisdom is better than that. Because wisdom would have told you it don't make sense to finance wheels. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Solomon says wisdom is better than your stuff. Watch this. He says over in, in 811, he says, for wisdom is better than rubies. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. God Almighty, you can't even compare your stuff to the wisdom of God. There is no comparison. Because a lot of us have stuff that we're struggling to keep and or to maintain. Are you hearing me? And wisdom will say, you know, that's a whole lot of house. I don't even want to cut the yard of the house I got. <laughs> Nobody going to say amen. We, we, were, we were with the brothers. We were, I need y'all to pray for me. We were with the brothers on Wednesday, and if you're a man, you need to come on every second and fourth Wednesday and hang out with the brothers. Hey, we had a wonderful, wonderful time talking about some real stuff, some real wisdom. And I, I, was, I was honest, and I said, bro, bro, I need y'all to pray for me because, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with that lazy category. You know, what I'm saying is I done got over what people think so much that stuff that I probably should do, I don't even worry about. You know what I'm talking about? You, you know where, where the natural rain is your car wash? <laughs> Ain't nobody going to say, man. So, somebody say, get out of here. You right there with me. Looking at your car like that's That gray is kind of a nice little. Right? But wisdom will tell you that you need to take care of and maintain what God has blessed you with. We talked about that a few weeks ago. You need to make the investment, come on somebody, in your ox. Where there are no ox, the cribs are clean, but great increase comes by the strength of an ox. Somebody will get that. Go get that tape from the other week, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. So watch this. He says, for wisdom is better than rubies. All the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Watch Solomon. He goes on right here. He says, so, so wisdom is so important. He says, get wisdom. Right? Now, the Holy Ghost is important because Holy Ghost brings wisdom. Faith is important because it brings you to salvation to receive the Holy Ghost. But once you got faith and once you got the Holy Ghost, Solomon says, get wisdom. Some of us won't speak in tongues. We, we want to pray and shout. Solomon says, get wisdom. You know, that's where we need a T-shirt with all of the graphic t-shirt, we need one that says, get wisdom. Why, Solomon? Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. I'm speaking this wisdom to you, get wisdom. Wherever there's wisdom, you need to sit down and take a moment, stop and listen to it and take it all in. Didn't get enough witnesses. You, you know why I like to see your folk? I tell you this all the time. We keep seeing your folks around our church. Y'all worried about them. But we keep seeing sing, your people around our church because that's wisdom in our presence. That's wisdom in our midst. And I say it to you all the time. Old folks, in their mind, they ain't long for life anyway. So they ain't finna take their last days and waste it with no foolishness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not saying you need to find your church that's just full of seniors where there's no youth and there's no energy and no progression, but you need to have a healthy amount of seniors in your church. Seniors will, listen to me. I, told, I tell this story all the time. Barbara Chambers, God bless our soul. She's already in heaven with Christ. But I remember one time after service, I was standing greeting the people, and she came up to me and stood next to me, and she tapped my hand and put a peppermint in my hand. And I said, oh, I appreciate it, Lady Bob, but I'm good. She said, no, no, Pastor, you need this. <laughs> y'all better get y'all some seasoned folks in your life who can talk to you and tell you some things because they've already seen it. They've already been through it. Some of them have already been through it unsuccessfully and successfully, and they can tell you how to avoid the pitfall. And Lord, forgive us if somebody don't come back to our church because the pastor's breath was humming. <laughs> Solomon says, get wisdom wherever you can. And wherever you, is this blessing anybody? Wherever you can, wherever you have opportunity, get wisdom. 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 
Seek it out. Pray for it. Look for it. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Watch verse 6. He says, forsake her not, and she shall preserve you. She'll keep you. She'll maintain you. Watch verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. That, that word principal, it, it means it is the preeminent. It's the chief thing. There is nothing more valuable and nothing higher than wisdom. He's saying that should be the first and the foremost thing that you're seeking when you're looking for ways to live your life and ways to manage your life and ways to live for God and ways to please God. He says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all thy getting, get an understanding. We'll talk about understanding another day. But the point is, Solomon says, get wisdom. Wisdom is so important. Watch this. Watch this. Solomon says, he that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. A few weeks ago, we talked about soul rest. And you will probably be more peaceful and have more solace and tranquility in your soul if you were wise. Because you start understanding the value of opinions. God Almighty. Both the values of opinions of people and the values and opinions of God and the value and opinion of yourself. And people's opinion oscillates, vacillates, is up and is down. It's up and it's down. See, God, even when I make a mistake, his opinion doesn't change. But you let me make a mistake and your opinion will change quickly. <laughs> quickly. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so Solomon says, he says, look, he, look, he that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. This is the place where you need to be really selfish and thinking about you and concerned about you. Loveth his own soul. He keepeth, uh, he that keepeth understanding shall find good. Am, am I helping anybody in here? Watch, watch Solomon. Watch this. Solomon, he says, I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about, how important wisdom is. He says, the, this wisdom have I seen under the sun. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 9. He says, this wisdom have I seen under the sun. And again, it seemed great unto me. So now, this is Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived. So I'm not saying he's Jesus. I'm not saying he's God. But I'm saying he's the wisest man that ever lives. The Bible declares that there was no other king as great as Solomon after him other than Jesus. Right? But, but somebody who has that much wisdom, we all listen to. In fact, this is what Ecclesiastes is all about. Ecclesiastes is all about Solomon saying, look, vanity is vanity. Everything under the sun is vanity. There ain't nothing under the sun that you can do or try that is going to bring you true satisfaction and contentment. Why? Because I'm Solomon. I had more money than you could ever even imagine. So if it was something to be tried, I tried it. If it was something to be paid for, I had the money to pay for it. I, I ain't going to talk to me in here. Solomon said, I done been through all of that. Vanity. Them cars, vanity. Those women, those men, vanity. Your friends, vanity. He's saying none of this stuff can validate you for the way you're seeking to be validated only by how the Spirit of God can validate you. So, so he says this. He said, look, wisdom is important, though. If you're going to try to get anything, I've had houses, cars, lands, women, maybe men, I don't know. My point is, I've had it all. But what I'm telling you is wisdom is better than any of it. And, and so he describes, he says, this, this kind of wisdom have I seen under the sun. And it seemed great to me. Watch this. He said, there was a little city, a few men within it, a little bitty city, a few men within it. And there came a great king against it and besieged it and built great bulwarks against it. Now, there was found in it a poor wise man. And he, by his wisdom, did what? Delivered the city. Yet no man remembered the same poor man. Solomon is saying, there is this little bitty city, and there was only a handful of people who lived in it. But there was this king. This is very evangelistic, by the way. There was this king who came and besieged the city and built these forts around it. And, and it was a little man, a little poor old man in the city. And by his wisdom, he delivered it. And yet no man remembered that same wisdom. Isn't it amazing 
how in the moment when the wisdom helps us and benefit us, we laud the wisdom. But just a few short moments after, we forget that wisdom. This is what Solomon is saying. That wisdom delivered the city that the man had, but soon and very soon after, nobody was paying attention to his words anymore. That's how we are when we're children. We get ourselves in some kind of jam, financial jam, right? Get our driver's license. First start getting out there, we realize the car will do 85, 90. Not wise enough to know that, hey, tickets ain't cheap. Right? But we get in those jams, and then we come, and we say to our parents, our mother, our father, look, you know, man, they, they talk about they're going to take my driver's license, but I got to get to school, I got to get to work. I was just trying to see if you could help me out. Are oh, you hearing me? And then we go and we sit and listen to all of the wisdom for that moment, just so we can get the $150. Come on, somebody. To get our car out the pound. To get the boot off of our car. But as soon as we get our car out the pound and get our boot out the car, we'll be right back at it. Watch verse, verse 16. It says, then said I, this is what Solomon said after observing this, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. The words of wise men are heard in quiet more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. Somebody tweet that. <laughs> and tag all of our governmental officials in it. I'm, I'm sorry. That's a good one. That's a... Y'all praying. Tweet it. <laughs> In other words, you're not going to hear wisdom on the loud stage. You're not going to hear the wisdom, not the wisdom that God brings. Come on, somebody. All over the social media platform. But you'll hear wisdom in sincere, quiet moments, both with God, his spirit, and his wise people. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? Watch this. Verse 18 says, wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroyeth much good. There are some American farmers that probably need this right now. Might, might impact how you vote. Them three verses right there. Can I read it again? Then said, our wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. The words of wise men are heard in quiet more than the cry of them that ruleth among fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. But one sinner, one sinner. One voice of stupidity. One asinine idea can destroy a whole lot of good. What was the point? You say this is evangelistic. This sounds a whole lot like Jesus, Satan, and us. Can, can I read it again? Watch this. Uh, verse 19 said, now there was found, oh no, I need to go 14, 13. Okay. This wisdom have I seen under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. There was a little boy named Ray Taylor <laughs> who didn't have much going on in his mind and his soul. And a great enemy king came and besieged his mind, his heart, and his soul. What sounds so evangelistic? And, and, and built all kinds of yokes and chains and bondages, insecurities, lack of confidence. Come on, somebody. Body image, ethnic image, all of these things around here, little old bitty soul. Now, there was found in heaven one little poor man, a wise man. Y'all see this? This is where you should be doing the stuff because this is evangelism. <laughs> Named Jesus. And by him, with his wisdom, his power, delivered the young man's soul. Yet, Ray didn't remember it. God saved. Got healed, got delivered, <laughs> and then went right back to it. Watch this. Then said I, wisdom is better 
than people's opinions, than having friends and networks and having all of this other stuff. But the wisdom that Christ used to save his soul was despised and not heard. The words of a wise man is spoken in quiet. It's in the quiet place. Even in a space like this when the word is going forth, it's in that quiet place of your heart where you hear the word of God and the spirit of God causes you to have faith to believe in the word of God, to believe in the son of God. And as a result of that, the Holy Spirit quickens you. And even in your little quiet place in your heart and your soul, there are explosions of transformation. There are explosions of regeneration in the quiet. I can't even hear it. I, I love it when, when after service somebody comes to Say, man, that show did bless me, man. That spoke right to me. That's exactly what I was dealing with. That's exactly, we, man, you must have been on our phone Thursday. We were talking about the exact same thing. That's that quiet place where the word causes those explosions that we can't even hear. Now, sometimes those explosions are so dynamic and so huge that it come out your mouth. You, you know what I'm saying? When something clicks in your mouth and then you just bust out, hallelujah. Thank you. I wish I had somebody who was having an explosive experience in this place. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. But nobody wants to hear wisdom. But much can be destroyed by foolishness. So then we saw the nature of wisdom, the importance of wisdom, and I'm almost finished. I, I like this teaching because some of us are getting ready to go back to school, whether we're educators or ones being educated or have children who are being educated. We're getting ready to go back to school, and we need to get wisdom. But wisdom don't just come to you from any old place. Wisdom, watch what James says. James says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives it liberally. God is willing to give you the wisdom that you desire, the wisdom that you both seek and need. He gives it liberally and not partially. That's what that word abradeth not. He doesn't give it out partially. He gives you the full wisdom. God is not a stingy God when it comes to his wisdom and his understanding. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That full wisdom and it shall be given unto him. You have to ask for it. Are you hearing me? Just because you're saved and gave your life to the Lord don't mean you're automatically the wisest man and the wisest woman around. You have to constantly and daily seek God for his wisdom. Seek God for his spirit. You know, you know when we talk about being filled with the Holy Ghost, being filled with the Holy Ghost is not all about speaking in tongues exclusively. It's not about shouting. You know how they say when the woman, the brother in the church in the service starts shouting, they caught the Holy Ghost. No, no, it's not exclusively about that. Being filled with the Holy Ghost means to be controlled by the Holy Ghost. And when you're being controlled by the Holy Ghost, when you're being fully led and guided by the Holy Ghost, then your decisions and your actions are different. Yeah. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? And so James says, if you, if you lack this wisdom, you can ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Oh, God Almighty. And when God hears that request, he will give it to you freely. Yeah. This is a strong message. Because we got too many stupid people in the church. And I'm saying you need this wisdom. I need this wisdom. We need this wisdom. He gives it liberally for those who ask for it. It shall be given to them. The source of wisdom. God is the source of all wisdom. And listen, it is important for us to get this wisdom. Because the same wisdom that God will give to us is the same wisdom that God uses. That's, that's real strong right there. The same, listen to me, the same wisdom that God gives to us is the same wisdom that he uses. I'm going to let it sink in because this is going to change your life. When you understand what his wisdom makes you capable of. Solomon says this. He says, the Lord, by his wisdom, founded the earth. By understanding, hath he established the heavens. Did you hear what I just said to you? The same wisdom that God used to create the heavens and the earth, the same discernment that God used to create the heavens and the earth, the same understanding. Y'all getting distracted and not paying attention to me. This is what the enemy wants you to do is lose this. 
The same wisdom that God gives to you is the same wisdom he used to do this. Hmm. The same wisdom God used to produce all of the elements that's on the periodic table, one and two in particular, two parts hydrogen, one point oxygen, that that you breathe in, it, is the same wisdom that he gives to us. The Lord, by wisdom, has founded the earth, by understanding, hath established the heavens. Watch this. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop the dew. God Almighty. The same natural car wash that I use <laughs> came about as a result of God's wisdom. Watch James. So this is how you get the mark of it. I'm done right here because this ain't helping y'all. James says, who is a wise man and endeth with knowledge among you? Look around you and ask yourself, who's a wise man? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness, with the meekness of wisdom. Let me make this make sense. That word conversation is lifestyle. The way he or she lives her life. So it reads a little bit different. Who, who, why, who's wise among you? And endued with knowledge among you, let him show you out of the good lifestyle. You don't have to say anything to me. I could just look at your life. I got one witness. There must be some other people in here like, man, I need to check my stuff out and see what Pastor Ray is seeing. <laughs> By his lifestyle, the good lifestyle, his works, her works, how she performs, how she treats her husband, how he treats his wife, how they treat their children, how do they treat their own mama? He talked crazy to his mama. God Almighty. If he talked crazy to his mother, what make you think that he's got sweet nothings to say to you? Are you hearing what I'm saying? He always fighting. What make you think he's not going to fight you? If we had wisdom, wisdom would cause us to look at the lifestyle. Boy, I know I'm supposed to be talking about education, but since I'm here and I'm already over the time, Single people, better look at their lifestyle, right? Listen, listen, if God didn't do it before y'all got together, I ain't telling you what the Lord can and can't do. I'm just saying he ain't got to do it while I'm connected to you. Look at their lifestyle. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then don't give up on God. God got people. God got me and sisters. God got sisters, brothers. Amen. Y'all sound like Elijah over there in 1 Kings chapter 18. He down there after he didn't executed them 450 prophets of Jezebel of Baal. He over there whining to God. God, I'm all by myself alone. <laughs> Nobody to pray with me, prophesy with me. And God said, Elijah, stop tripping. I got 5,000 prophets who have not bowed their knee to Baal. I'm saying, sister, stop tripping. God got five Holy Ghost filled, five thousand, five million, countless amount of Holy Ghost men, Holy Ghost women. The problem might not be them. <laughs> might not be that they're not ready for you. It might be that I'm not ready for them. Are oh, you hearing what I'm saying? Because you, I'm going to go on back to this in just a second, but you cannot Expect for someone to, that you marry, that you connect with, to make you secure. If you didn't like you before you got with them, there is nothing they can say or do to cause you to start liking you. And I see most of the sisters clapping, but it's real with the brothers too. You don't like you, you don't like your station, and then you take it out on other people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Lord, deliver me from insecure people. You are not going to be with me and put me down, squash my dreams, walk all over my vision so you can feel better about yourself. The devil is a lie. 
We just not going to be friends. I don't care if you're my brother or my father. Care who you are. Let me just finish this then. That's the stuff that y'all really should be picking up on when it comes through like that. That's good stuff. Who is wise and a man and do with knowledge? And among you, let him show out of a good lifestyle his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife, bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. That's not wisdom. This wisdom descended not from above. This is not the same wisdom that James was talking about over in chapter 1, verse, verse 5. He said, this wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly and sensual and devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and evil work. Let me just pause right here because the Lord is doing something with our fellowship. He's shifting and changing us. We've been going through this period of disorientation, and the Lord is about to reorient us, and we're going to start calling a spade a spade. And, and when you come in our midst on our fellowship, on any of our teams, working with the children, singing on the play, praise team, doing security on the janitorials, if you bring this crap up in here, <laughs> edit that out, the, the video. But if you bring that in here, we are going to call it out. And we're going to say, hey, that right there, you, you done brought that stuff. That didn't come from above because we got the wisdom of the Holy Spirit in here. And the wisdom of the Holy Spirit helps us to keep our mouth. It, help, it helps us to self-check our opinions and our thoughts and not spew it out on other people. But that confusion comes from what? Evil work. And we're not going to do it. I remember we was in the Bible class talking about over there in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and 3. And Paul says, he says, look, when I came to you first, I gave you milk because you couldn't handle meat. Right? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to get us a whole bunch of bottles and some Similac. And we're going to have milk ministry. Nobody want to say amen. So when somebody bring you a bottle full of milk, you understand you're acting childish. You're acting immature. You're not functioning in wisdom. Right? Because wisdom says this little stuff that you hung up over really doesn't matter and it doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of what we're trying to accomplish for God. As a matter of fact, wisdom will say your little old feelings, uh-oh, did nobody want to say that? Your little, listen, you got to understand, I said this to somebody else, you have to understand uh, the value of what you are part of more than the part you play. What you are part of is so much bigger than the part you play. And when you realize that, you're just grateful to be a part. God Almighty. When we pray in our staff meetings all the time, we pray this. We say, God, thank you for giving us the privilege to partner with you in this kingdom work. Because he didn't have to. This is all get to, not have to. We love doing this stuff. And so we're not going to have confusion. Amen. We're not going to have confusion. Let me finish this right here. He says, but the wisdom... That is from above is what? First pure. Then peaceable. Gentle and easy to get along with. God Almighty. It's easy to be entreated. When you got a whole bunch of people that don't even want to ask you. They know you know you got the information. But you don't have the wisdom. But people with wisdom are easy to talk to. They're approachable. They don't have that automatic stink face. Y'all know what I'm saying? There's some people that just, maybe some of y'all like that. It ain't got a reflection of your heart. It's just something wrong with the muscles in your face. <laughs> right? Somebody waved and said, that's me, Pastor. I love everybody, but. Right? Y'all done been around them people, man. You know them ribs are good, but when they in line, they're like. <laughs> Wisdom is easy to talk to. It's easy to approach. It's full of mercy. Full of mercy. You know what I mean right there? Full of mercy. Mercy is not receiving the just punishment. 
that I do deserve. So wisdom is full of mercy, meaning it knows that that person was wrong. But because I'm wise, I have a heart full of mercy. And I say, you know what? That's okay. Let's just learn from it and move on. But no, not us. It'd be 16 years later. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And you still mad because she ain't like your potato salad. She just allergic to mustard. Or onions. I don't know. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Full of mercy, good fruits without partiality. Uh oh, so wisdom is not cliquish? Ooh, wow. Oh, so, so wisdom don't just speak to the people at the church that I know? That I like? Wisdom says all of these are God's children, and I've never seen her before. Excuse me, how you doing? My name is Ray. Well, I'm so glad you're here. What's your name? No, but not us foolish people. We go straight, soon as church is over with, y'all, boy, I'm about soon as it's over with, we go straight to the people we know. What's up, Woods? <laughs> and I just seen him yesterday. <laughs> Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Wisdom is not partial. Wisdom is not my foreign no more, right? Wisdom would take the sandwich with your two kids and their two kids split it into four and say, baby, this is how you share. Baby, the word says, give and it shall be given. Good measure, press down, shake it together, run it over. The word says it's better to give than it is to, you know, because y'all got some stingy little old kids. And, and they stingy because you ain't taught them. Then nobody want to say amen. Wisdom is not partial. And without hypocrisy, God almighty. Is that a good one? That, that one right there is worth the whole time that you sat in here. Wisdom is without hypocrisy. Y'all can't cuss on the way to church and cuddle on the bench <laughs> doing service. Y'all yeah. won't be real. Y'all won't be real. Y'all don't want to be real. I remember it was several years ago. Me and my wife, we were on our way to uh, this couples conference. <laughs> I think it was called Weekend to Remember or something like that, right? And man, I was just being the biggest butthole. And <laughs> so wisdom is uh is uh <laughs> that was too strong of a witness, little mama. I'm telling tell my story. The point is, now I can't even talk about it, right? We were acting up all the way there. And then sat in there convicted the whole time. See, fortunately, we weren't being hypocrites. We weren't all cuddly and everything else. But it spoke to us and realized you can't be one way out there and try to be another way in here. Or vice versa. You can't be one way in here and be another way out there. You got to be who you say you are at all times. Pretending like you say, full of the Holy Ghost and full of wisdom when you come in here. But raising hell when you go out there. And, this is the last one, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. All right, I'm going to stop right there. That's all I got, y'all. Have y'all been blessed with this? So some of us are about to embark on a new season. Some of us are going back to school. Some of us are starting new jobs. Some of us are going from eighth grade to ninth grade, ninth grade to 10th grade. Some of us graduated high school, we're moving on to college, moving into the workforce. And I'm saying to you, the level of success you could have if you do it in wisdom. Right, one of the things I didn't talk about about wisdom, wisdom is also discipline. Discipline is the same word in the same family as disciple. Discipline causes me to do the things that I know I need to do, but that honestly I really don't want to do. Can I be honest? That's the part that's messing up the majority of our lives. 
that's the part that we're really not seeing all of God's fullness is because we don't have the discipline to do the things that I know I need to do, but I really don't want to do it. Is there anybody else in here other than me that's been there? But God is going to help us today. I believe if we open up our hearts, if we humble ourselves, God will bring about a wisdom in our life that gives us both the energy and the power. Not necessarily the desire, but the energy and the power. Do you think that Jesus wanted to die on the cross? We have evidence that Jesus was rethinking it. He was like, look, God, I know all things are possible to you. Meaning to save these people that from their sin, not mine, but to save these people, God, I know you got any way, any way possible you can do that. But wisdom says, nevertheless, not how I would prefer it, Stephen, but let your will be done. That's some strong wisdom. I want you to think for a moment, all of the things that you know that you needed to do, should have done, but you just didn't want to. So you ultimately decided, that's all right, I ain't going to do it. And look at your life now. Look at that moment that was missed. Look at that opportunity that was missed. Look at that season that was missed. And sure, I'm happy with my life. Sure, I'm, I'm grateful for where God has me. But I got to be honest with you. When I look back over my life, where God has me today, I could have been 20 years ago. I got one person who agreed with me. You, you, you'll, you'll be honest. Where I am today, I finally got to a good place. But I could have been here so much sooner if I had just walked in wisdom. 